Fish out, fish out, baby. Hey, it's yeah, ripping. Oh. It's ripping drag, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Damn, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm on, too. I'm on. I'm on. Double hookup. Double hookup, baby. Uh-oh. That's a big fish. Do you want to know what my doormat says? It says hello. Another... Early morning, late start. Does that make sense? Early morning for me because I was up till four in the morning editing video. <laughs> I'm so tired. But it's a late start because it's actually like 1 p.m. Got my fuel jugs in the van. We're gonna go get some gas. And once I get some gas, I'm gonna drop the boat into the water right here in the backyard. Before we start fishing, I gotta give a thank you to this video's sponsor, Lord of the Board, a free to play friendly backgammon game that you can play anywhere at any time. You can download it on iOS and Android. It's such a unique game. I've never found a game that combines both luck and strategy. I've been playing it for a while now. I literally had no idea how to play this game when I started, but now I feel like a pro and I can play against people worldwide, and it's a blast every time. Now, I know you're thinking backgammon, that's like what my grandparents used to play. You know, with the with the triangles, growing up, I've always seen people playing this game, and I never had a clue how the game worked. But after I installed this app and played my first game, I basically <laughs> knew how to play right away. It's pretty simple. Boom, okay, it's picking an opponent for me. Who are we playing against? Zach. By the way, my username is Heiko. If you see me and you pair up against me, I will defeat you. So this is how the game works. There's a white team and a black team, and basically the goal is to get your color onto your side of the, the board first. You roll the dice, and depending what number you roll, you can either move yours forward, you can jump on theirs and send their pucks to the center of the board. If you roll two of the same numbers, that's freaking awesome, because then you can really clear the board heavy. Hold on, I gotta play. Suck it, Zach. Never liked you anyways. Sorry, I'm in the middle of a battle right now. Zach has a lot more money than I do. I think this guy knows what he's doing. Penelope, I need some words of encouragement here. Boom! I just sent Zach's puck to the center. Sucker. He just took my pucks. Alright guys. So we're near the end of the battle. You can see all my whites are on my side. All of his blacks are on his side. I might actually beat this guy. He was beating me, but I did some sneaky things. He might beat me, but I might beat him. <gasps> Bang him on the suck it, suck it sack. It's because I rolled a double at the end. You saw that? And when you roll a double, you basically get to go four times. I had four left. He had six left. Bam, and I won. Give me your money. Yeah, take your coins. <laughs> what I really like about this game is the unique table designs. There's tournaments with leaderboards. You can let everyone know you're the best, of course. And there's daily free bonuses, prizes, and just a lot going on that makes this game very interactive and very fun. I love this game, and I'm sure you guys will love it too. You get 500 free coins by checking out the link in the video description below. I'll also pin a comment with the download link. If you want to have a shot at trying to beat me, go download the app. Thanks again to Lord of the Board for sponsoring this video, making it possible for me to make more fishing videos. And now, let's get back to fishing. Quick question. The good old Range Rover here. I got her lifted up right now on airbags. She needs a new shifting cable. Are there any mechanics watching this video right now that know how to put a new shifting cable in there? She's pretty much worthless, except for going forward and backwards to drop the boat in and out of the water or else. If I try to take her on the highway, she'll just kick out of gear in the middle of driving. Look at all this bird poop on my window. Hmm. Right now I'm the guy at the gas station that everyone hates during a hurricane because everyone thinks I'm stealing all the fuel. They think I'm hoarding it, but really I'm just trying to go fishing. 380 a gallon. I don't know what's worse, this poop on my window or the price of gas these days. Two years ago, 380 was pull up to a marina in your boat, get the fuel pump for you kind of prices. Now it's pump it yourself prices. I can't even yeehaw right now. About to drop the boat into the water. Today the weather forecast said it was going to be like 5 to 6 mile an hour winds, but my palm trees are moving like 15 mile an hour winds. 
That's definitely 15 mile an hour winds. I got a lot of comments on my older video that's like, a responsible captain wouldn't go offshore if the weather report is gonna say a storm's coming in the video where it got caught in a storm. Let me tell you about some about weather reports. Here in Florida, it'll tell you it's gonna be sunny all day, no wind. And when you head offshore, it's sunny, no wind. Two hours later, you're stuck in five foot waves black skies and lightning crashing down around you. The weatherman don't know. Nobody knows. But we ain't gonna let that stop us from going offshore, you hear me? I'm gonna get some fishing gear together and then it's game time. I'm finally starting to wake up a little bit. I got my cold brew in me. Yeehaw! There it is. You can almost say it. I just dropped my boat in the water and I think there's something really bad going on here. Well, first of all, I dropped my cold brew. The whole freaking thing. Down here. Cold brew everywhere. My bilge is full of cold brew now. But it gets worse. I saw some flies. Yes, I saw some flies sitting on the cooler and I was like, why would there be flies sitting on the cooler? Unless I forgot something in the cooler. And I was like, there's no way I forgot something in the cooler. It's been like 10 days since I've put this boat in the water. There ain't nothing in this cooler. <laughs> Let's open it and find out. Anytime there's flies on your cooler, it's a bad sign. Oh, <laughs> oh sh- <laughs> I'm gonna be sick. I think there might be a fish in there. I don't know, it's disintegrated. In a straight Rambo fashion, I picked up the whole cooler, put it on the dock here. It's heavy, but let's drain it out. Please don't get on my hand. Please don't get on my hand. Oh, oh the smell, it's unbearable. Bam, and we're on the boat. We got Ryan on the boat. What's up, guys? We cleaned the cooler, it was pretty bad. Cleaned all the Dunkin' Donuts off the deck. Got the rods on the boat, the gear, the beers. And now we're gonna head out to the Patrice. And guess what, we have zero bait. No bait. We're going patchery fishing with no bait. And that's, we're, we're risk takers. We're, we got chum, so we're gonna put chum out and try to catch ballyhoo. If we don't get the ballyhoo, we're basically just gonna be standing here drinking beers, yep. so. Hey, if we don't catch bait, I'll, I'll go down there and catch a fish with my teeth. That's the spirit. Let's see if the engine even turns on. Ooh, she's alive. Turned on right away. Okay, all right. She still got it. We got a storm building over there. It's supposed to be sunny today. The weatherman was wrong once again. Hang on to your horses. Here we go. Right now we're heading out of Key Largo and heading straight to the reefs drop off at the edge in about 21 feet of water. Here we're going to anchor up, put out some chum, and try to catch some live bait. Alright, kill the engine. Oh f My f***ing screw cap came off. Oh no. You got another uh, port laid down on the boat? You can just swap out? No, I don't. Oh, I don't like that one bit. That shit's filling up with water. <laughs> All we needed was a buoy and a dream. <laughs> now that's a butt plug. If I've ever seen one. Let's get the chum in there. Woo-wee! Come on, Ballyhoo. Well, I guess we might as well drink a beer while we wait for the Ballyhoo to show up. Can't go wrong there. Might as well. I like beer. You need another beer? Yes, please. 
I put them in the bucket over there. The belly who have arrived. They probably want a beer. All right, what is that? Three belly who? Three belly who? It's a good start. Better fill up the live well. Pull that belly hoop net. Pull that belly hoop net. Ooh wee! There we go, belly hoop on belly hoop on deck. Oh, we lost one. I got him. I got him. Oh, the knife Can I flew. Catch that yet? The knife, the knife flew out of the fucking thing. What knife? Where? It's gone. Uh, we don't have a knife. What? I don't think we're gonna be butterflying any ballyhoo. <laughs> Man, it's been a rough, a rough start to the day for me. I tell you what. Ballyhoo. All right, well, we got lots and lots of belly hoops. You want any more? No, I think we're good for now. Sucks we can't butterfly them. Woo wee! Putting the belly hoo on the boat. You know, we keep having a couple of hiccups here and there, but the bait came quick today. Look at the live well. I'm having some GoPro issues for, I don't know, this thing's like two weeks old and already giving me issues, story of my life. We'll try to make this work the best way possible and I think we're gonna, right now we're in 20 feet of water. We got our chum bag out, we got ballyhoo behind the boat and we are right on the reef's edge. Probably about four football fields that way. It drops down to 100 feet. We're gonna drive out there into like 140, 130 feet of water and we're gonna drift these live ballyhoo on the bottom and try to get ourselves a mutton or something. We're also gonna try to drift some on the top, maybe for a sailfish. We gonna get a sailfish today? We might get a mahi today, buddy. A mahi? Yeah, they're in. I've been catching mahi at 130 Woo! feet, dude. 130 feet, the mahi are here. I ain't gonna make no promises now. We might get a wahoo on this live ballyhoo. Ma'am, now we gonna get a wahoo, a mahi wahoo. We're probably gonna get a marlin too at this point. Yeehaw, and we're off. Off to the promised lands. Oh, speed ahead. We have arrived. We're going to drift right into 130. Like, 130 is like right there. Gotcha. Yep, yep. Snippity snap. Pity packer wickety whack drugs. Snap! And we're offshore. If you consider 140 feet depth water offshore, I do. I certainly do. Anything deeper than 70 feet, I'm offshore, baby. And we're just gonna drift right along kind of the reef's edge. We're, we're just drifting in 140 feet, 130 feet of water. We're gonna put a couple live ballyhoo on the surface, and we're gonna put a couple live ballyhoo on the bottom. I forgot I didn't forget my knife. My knife flew off the boat on our way out. We're not going to be butterflying any ballyhoo. We're going to only be using live ballyhoo. Here you go. Oh yeah, I just need one. Um, I'll, I'll get it. Here's a big f fat stinger rig for you. Come on, buddy. Yeah. That's what I want. I want to talk to Sam some Hmm. What you got there? Oh yeah. Oh. All right. That's one live ballyhoo. That's the surface ballyhoo right there. Hopefully it's gonna get us a nice wahoo or something. Yep. You're gonna to wanna to let him go on this side of the boat or else he's gonna drift under the boat. 
Okay, down my boy goes. Down to the bottom he goes. All right, that ballyhoo is down there. Looking good. Jesus. I don't think this is airtight enough, so I'm gonna shove my jacket in there too. It's got a lot of water in there, man. This is not good. If this thing fills up with water, dude, that's like, like the boat ain't gonna ride right. Now, I don't need to trim it down when it's gonna already weigh down because it's a thousand pounds of water in the back. It's got like a lot of water in there. It's like halfway full. I've lost this boat almost one too many times, so. I would worry about it if that was like an old dive platform. That's brand new fiberglass, bro. You're good. Because we were bottom drifting, the boat was swaying with the waves, and some waves were coming over the dive platform, and some of that water was getting into the platform itself. I just couldn't get it 100% watertight, and it was already about halfway full of water. I could tell the boat was definitely sitting deeper in the water than normal in the back. So instead of continuing to drift and letting more water get in there, I decide we should just do some trolling, because when the boat's in motion, water's not swaying over the back and filling it up so now we're just gonna slow troll these live ballyhoo on stinger rigs that we have already rigged up. Ah, beer down. No. Oh, look, 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 look. Oh, yeah. Dude, there's a sail or something over there. Yeah. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this. Yeah. Quit losing your back hook, buddy. Yeah, you got a stinger, that's good. Stingers is perfect for this. Slow idle trolling, some live valley who wants stingers. Yeehaw. I'm letting my guy out way back. <coughs> Thank you. There's fish busting all around us, so we're gonna troll these live valley who at like a real slow pace. We're doing four miles an hour right now, just basically idling them around. But look what's going on in front of us. There's pelicans and there's friggin' birds. Yo, there's bait everywhere. Yo, mackerel are flying out of the water everywhere. I know. That's why I'm rigging this up. Oh! I love those bait knives. They're like $6 ones. Colorful handles. Those things are sharp forever. The one I lost is the American flag one. Yeah! Fish out! Fish out, baby! Hey, it's oh, ripping! Oh. It's ripping drag, bro! Oh, yeah! Oh, my God! Damn, bro! Yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm on too. I'm on. I'm on. Double hookup. Double hookup. Uh oh, that's a big fish. Yeah, I know. I have a really big fish too. We got big fish. Oh, holy shit. Big fish, bros. <laughs> what do you got? I don't know. I got a lot of them, bro. Big king. I got a big king. You wanted some pink fish over here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm stoked. Let's. You gonna need the gaff? How are we gonna do yeah, this? Yeah, we're gonna need gaff for sure. All right. Gaff. Woo! Well, how about you? You got a gaffer on there? I. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Mine's really Come on, baby. Oh, 
I'm getting the head shake. I, I wonder if we got the same fish on. I don't know, we might. We just marked something big right under the boat. I think we got, we definitely are on each other's lines, I think. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. All right, coming up. Okay, uh, here's the gaff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I'll put, I'll gaff him. Oh, he got there, babe. Oh, he got there. All right. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, holy. That's a big, oh, that is a big bonita. Oh my lord, it's a monster. What the? Not on the same fish. What? That's a huge bonita. You ever eaten a bonita? No. <laughs> Actually, I have. Oh shit, man. I was, I was like, mine's got head shakes, which is really weird. That's a massive bonita right there. I fear I have the same fate ahead of me. Yours look bigger than mine. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. I think I'm just. I'm fighting them on loose drag. I saw a That's a big fish, dude. That's a big fish. You got another massive bonita. Oh yeah! Oh my God, bro! Is that a big bonita? Oh! Oh! Alright, you got this, Laura. Okay. Oh, yeah! There you go. Oh, no, you got a pink. No, here's a bonita. Sure? Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, no, no. Make sure you get your work out today. I want to make sure we bleed these suckers. Bro, I bet I can make a bonita taste good. Woo! Holy macaroni, those are big. <laughs> Tell them we got more. Heck yeah. Damn, those are huge. Okay, we don't have a knife, but we got to slit their throat somehow. Uh. Yeah, just... Where's some flyers at? Wound ourselves. Yeah, I want to stick them in here. Oh man, with our bait? Well, bucket. Take the casting out of the black one, just head him down in the bucket. Oh, he's bleeding good. Well, it's good. It'll drain real quick in there. Woo! Oh yeah. <laughs> bloody decks. Freaking bloody decks. There's this like pickled bonita recipe I've been wanting to try. Oh well, yeah. Or like can canned tuna recipe, I don't know. Fifty feet of water. That's 50 feet of water, man. Good luck out there, my friend. On the slow drifter. Whee! What a freaking mondo fish. Like, that's crazy. I thought it was a king at first. I did too. That thing was massive, bro. Oh, man. That was a He's mackerel. still on there? No, it was a mackerel. I think he just chewed my shit off. Oh, wait. Back. Or it might be a sail. Could be a sail if he's messing with it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. No! Oh man. He 
it broke it or something happened I don't know just cut it clean off what the heck jumbos holy jumbo I forgot how big they are <laughs> even if that comes in a little bit it would be fine I told you I used to be a weatherman when I was last There's some rain coming from our left side there. We're already feeling the drizzle. So instead of trolling more, we decide to head back home and get to cooking. We're back at the home port. Engine getting flushed. Boat just got cleaned. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Y'all want to see these freaking bonitos? Damn. These are freaking huge. Make them real big for a nice thumbnail. Is that, is that gonna be good? Are we gonna? All right, cool. I'm sure I'll get a good screenshot out of that. There you have it. Big bonitos. I mean, these guys are huge. Like as, as big as me almost. Are you gonna eat one? Yeah, you cooking one up. Might as well, right? For the, for YouTube. Got our tuna. They've been on ice all night long. Just took them out. We're gonna fly them up. I got a bucket of ice water. We'll soak the steaks in there, or the fillets. That is a red, red meat. A yeah, very red meat. You know, we bled these guys out and they bled for a long time. I figured we we did a good job bleeding them, but there's a lot of blood left in here. Put that right in the water. Now what I'm gonna do is just cut all these pieces into more manageable sizes and I cut all the bloodline off. The bloodline stuff is the really dark meat. It's almost black. It's just so dark on this tuna. I want nice clean chunks of tuna without any of the bloodline in it because we're gonna be making canned tuna and the really dark bloodline meat can make it taste a little fishy, a little off. I'm not a huge fan of it, so just spend some time, make your pieces look nice. I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side of this filet, and then on both filets, on both fish. I'm not gonna show you all that because it takes a moment, but it wasn't too bad. Okay, I got the bonito, or is it bonita? I don't know, you tell me, leave a comment below, but where is it little tunny? Or is it Atlantic Ocean tuna bonita? I don't know. Here we just call them bonitas here in Florida. Everyone that I know, we just call them bonitos or bonita. And I put all the fillets in this ice water. I cut all the bloodlines out. Ooh, it's cold. You can see the water is getting a little bloody, just a tiny bit, not a lot. I'm gonna let it soak in this cold water for 12 hours. Then I'm gonna put new water in it, nice fresh clean water. Every 12 hours I'm gonna keep changing the water, maybe two or three times until we have a real clean water. And then we're gonna make some canned tuna. Got our bucket of ice water with the fish in it. It's been in the water for 24 hours. Now we got a little bowl and some ingredients, a couple jars, and we're about to make ourselves some jarred up tuna. Um, excuse me, buddy, you, oh, <laughs> hey, buddy, 
Hey, I'm trying to cook here. I'm sorry, but oh, you want some tuna, don't you? This is this is how I know he wants tuna. He acts all loving. Really, he's up to no good. He knows how to use me. Got a bowl of water that's heating up, and I'm gonna cut up an onion and clove of garlic. A half an onion should be more than fine. And for the clove, we're just gonna peel them all out of there. Oh yeah, fresh garlic. Gonna wanna roll up your sleeves for this one. Dip into this cold bucket of ice. Woo! Oh, that's cold. Ah, look at that tuna. It looks good. After being in ice for 24 hours, it kind of lost its like bloody, bloody look. Now it kind of has a more neutral color to it. All the tuna has been added. Now we're gonna bring the water to a boil and then we're gonna scoop off any um, impurities, foam, blood bubbles and stuff. You'll see in a second. Starting to boil and you see this stuff foaming. We're gonna wanna scoop that out in just a little bit once there's more of it. I'm not totally sure what that is. Maybe it's like, I think it's blood coagulating or something. I don't know, leave a comment. If you know what all this foamy stuff is when you boil fish, let me know. We're at a nice rolling boil. Just siphon that out. And then we're left with a Real nice, clean, clear water. Time to add our seasonings. We got some salt. Crushed red pepper. Crushed rosemary. Ground rosemary would also work. Ground ginger. Stir in there. Now we're gonna add our onion. Whoa, hello. Break it up in there. Add our garlic in there. <whistles> Tell you what, it smells really good. And now we're gonna just let this simmer kind of on a low setting for 40 minutes. If the water level starts to go a little down, we're just gonna add a little extra water to it. And I'll see you guys in 40 minutes. Hold up, I almost forgot the bay leaves. We'll put, uh, I don't know, a couple of bay leaves in there. First time trying this, I have no idea if I'm doing this right or wrong, but we will see what the results come out to be. They've been done boiling for 40 minutes now. Time to take them out and let them cool. Ooh, these are pretty firm pieces of tuna. Ooh, those are hot. Better let them cool down. It's time to put the tuna in our glass jars here. And whoo, whoa, that looks like real tuna, like something you would buy in a store. This first jar, I didn't really break up the tuna that much, but in the other jars, I end up breaking it up a lot more so I can fit a lot more tuna in one jar. Not sure which method is better. The way I see it, more tuna in one jar, mo better. It smells good. It actually smells really good. Then we're gonna fill the rest of the space inside the jar with some olive oil. And I'm sure there's other ways to do this if you wanna use water or tomato juice, or I don't know, you can get creative with it, but I'm gonna use olive oil. There we go, a jar ready to get pressure cooked. But first we gotta get the other jars done. This one is loosely packed. These are tightly packed.
Now I'm filling all the jars up with some olive oil. These other two jars are a little more tightly packed than the first jar, so it takes a little bit of time for the oil to be able to work its way throughout the whole jar. So it just takes a minute, but it'll fill up. Now we're gonna put them in a big pot of water and you want about an inch to two inches of water above your jars. We're gonna start boiling it. And once I get it to a rolling boil, we're just gonna let it boil for about four hours. And anytime the water evaporates, I just add more water to make sure it never goes below the lids. I just got back from Publix and I got myself a nice loaf of white bread thick slice. Cause we're about to make the best dang tuna salad sandwich the world has ever seen. I hope. Or maybe it's gonna be terrible, I don't know. We're about to find out. When I pressure cooked those tuna jar things over there, that was two months ago. And they've been sitting in this dark cabinet for yeah, about two months, three of them. I haven't tried them, I haven't opened them. They should stay good for a good year or two like this, so I'm not worried about it. But they've been chilling in here. Elliot's been a little upset because all he wants to do is eat the tuna and he gets on the counter, even though I tell him not to, but then he does it anyways and he just he doesn't speak English, so there's a barrier of problems there. Isn't that right, Elliot? Okay. Clearly he's not interested in talking, but yes, it's been months. Y'all have probably noticed I haven't uploaded a video in like two months. I took a little break. The video I posted yesterday is actually a perfect example of why I needed a break from YouTube. I caught a baby kingfish and in the video I was like, oh, it's a baby kingfish, I'm gonna throw him back. And all day long for the past three days, I've been getting notifications on my phone which, by the way, I got an iPhone now, baby. I'm in the iPhone world. I was an Android user for 12, 13 years. I just got my first iPhone. I like this thing. I'm gonna make a, a full video on my personal Heiko Winkler channel about what it's like for an Android user to switch over to iPhone and if I would recommend it or not. Check out my personal channel. I'm gonna link it below, Heiko Winkler, it's just my name. But I've been getting notifications all day, all night, saying, Heiko, you dumb piece of stupid that's a zero mackerel not a baby kingfish that you just threw back into the ocean six years and you still don't know the difference between a zero mackerel and a baby kingfish first of all it was a baby kingfish it has that defined head in the silvery gray top here why don't i just show you so a kingfish has a lateral line that runs along its back and has an extreme sharp drop off under its dorsal fin, just like the one that I'm outlining right now. That's a clear indication that it's a kingfish. If it was a Spanish mackerel, which they look very similar when they're young because kingfish have these little yellow spots when they're babies, but those eventually disappear. You can see the ones in the back are already disappearing, but Spanish mackerel lateral line runs fluid like this. So you know it's not a Spanish mackerel. Also, the top of a, sp of a kingfish is more blue-gray color, while Spanish mackerel are more greenish colored. It's a freaking baby kingfish. But for those of y'all that think this is a zero mackerel, let me show you why it's definitely not a zero mackerel. A zero mackerel, on the other hand, has lateral squiggly lines. They're more greenish on the top. They don't have that same face. Similar faces, a little different. If you'll pull up the picture of a zero mackerel and a juvenile kingfish, put them back to back, watch my video again. It's a freaking kingfish! So stop calling me a piece of shit dumb that doesn't know about fishing. Somebody even wrote, you are so stupid that if I ever saw you walking around in public, I'm going to just walk up to you and punch you in the face. Damn. So when I'm walking around Publix to buy my loaf of bread to make a tuna salad sandwich, the whole time I'm like... <sighs> Sorry ma'am, I thought you were sneaking up behind me to uh, sucker punch me. If someone wants to come up to me in public and duel me in the middle of a Publix aisle, all right, let's go. It's not gonna end well for you. Please nobody try to duel me in real life. Please don't let that happen. A couple years ago, I caught a 
yellow eye snapper and on the video i was like damn it's a it's an american red snapper too bad and i released it and i Got a bunch of comments making fun of me. But somebody wrote, bro, just so you know, American Red Snapper don't have yellow eyes. That was a yellow-eyed snapper. They're very good eating. Just so you know, next time you want to put that in your box, that was a great fish, but next time keep them. You know what? I accept the critique. I make mistakes. I have never once in my six years on YouTube said I was a pro fisherman. Most of the time, I actually, I straight up admit, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to have a good time, trying to catch some fish, trying to learn new things and teach new things all at the same time. You can tell me I'm wrong. That's okay. But you don't have to call me names or tell me you're going to attack me in public. And then all these other things that people say are just, jeez. You guys out there that have been following me for years and years and leave the best comments ever, y'all are the light at the end of this dark tunnel and y'all keep me going. So I will keep reading every comment. It's like, I feel like I owe it to my fans to read everyone's comments. My skin has got a lot thicker in the last five, six years, but it's still not super thick like some people. Some people can just brush off really negative comments. But for me, some, they just kind of stick with me sometimes. You want to write a negative comment? All I got to tell you is thank you for the view. When you smash the dislike button, don't smash it too hard, because then if you break your phone or the mouse on your computer, you're not going to be able to watch my next video. So just chill out, relax, and be happy. There is something else that happened in my life that... I don't even think I need to talk about it because people will probably eventually catch on. Because y'all are smart. I learned one thing. My viewers know more about me than I know about myself. Y'all are smart. Right now, the main goal in my life is to reach a million subscribers, and I am so far away from that at 128,000 subscribers. Took me almost six years to get to 128,000. How long will it take me to get to a million? I don't know, but right now that's my life goal. During my time off, I watched a lot of my old videos. Some of my videos that have 3 million views, 2 million views. I sucked at fishing so much back then, but people loved it because I didn't care what people thought about me. I was just going out, having a, a cold beer, catching fish, and just being myself. The past year, I think, honestly, I've just been trying too hard. When I wake up in the morning, I need to relax, have a chilada, make a coffee, smell the fresh ocean breeze in my nose. <sighs> Mm, there's still something in there from last night. <laughs> Joke. Look at this. I need to stand out here on the porch. Smile, because wow. I literally have everything that I could ever want in my life right here. Except the wind. I could do without the wind. So let's get to cooking. Let's pick a jar. I choose you. All right, look what we got here. A bowl, some diced up uh, key, uh, uh, celery, lemon, mayo, and our tuna, and some salt and pepper. We're gonna mix it all in a bowl, and that's it. Easy peasy. I figure before we mix the tuna, let's open it on camera. I'm really excited. Smells just like canned tuna that you would buy at a store. It smells good. I mean, can you see that? Okay, I'm gonna just try a little piece. Just a little. Better than canned tuna from a store. Oh snap, this is a game changer. Let's make a sandwich. I am so happy right now, you have no idea. I'm like, ecstatically happy. Not really sure how much I should use. I'm kind of just eyeballing it. Kind of want to go on the heavy side because I don't want the celery or the mayo to overpower it. So I just want to use a lot of tuna. Now we're going to add our celery. Now we're going to add our mayo. Not really sure how much to use. Can always add more later. 
And now we're going to squeeze half a lemon into there. Last but not least, salt and pepper. And then mix it on up. I think I'm going to need more mayo. Maybe. Maybe not. It's actually looking pretty good. Woo! Look at that. Oh, smokes. Okay, okay, okay. We toasted a slice of white bread. Woo! We'll slice right down the middle. Here we go. Bonito tuna salad sandwich. Wow. I just spilled some on the floor. This, if you like tuna salad sandwiches, mmm. This is a home run. Wow. It, honestly, <clears throat> it tastes like any other tuna salad sandwich, but, and this is gonna sound weird, but it's less fishy. Like, you know sometimes when you open a can of tuna, sometimes it's pretty flavorless, it's all right, tastes good, and then sometimes you're like, ooh, that's really tuna-ishy or something. This is like super neutral. You get that little tuna taste, but really it's just more of the meat texture and it just tastes like a tuna salad sandwich that has nothing wrong with it. Something you would expect if you ordered a tuna salad sandwich at like a really nice five star lunch place or something on the water. This is what I would expect to get and I'd be like, wow, where do you guys get your tuna from? This is really good. In the future, if I catch big bonitas, I already know what I'm doing. The cool thing is that when you make the canned tuna, you don't have to eat it that week or that month. You probably don't even have to eat it that year. I was reading online that some people keep these things in jars for up to two years, so I might keep one way back in there as an experiment and then try to eat it in like, I don't know, a year and a half and see how it is. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. I know that you're an OG if you're still watching right now. Hit that like button, leave a comment, say something nice. I already got another video that I'm gonna sit right back down at the desk and start editing. So I will, so I will see you guys on the very next episode. Cheers. I've been feeling this way for far too long